Welcome back to my practical bash and terminal skills series. We've reached part nine and I've labeled this one curl, the only HTTP client you'll ever need. So in the last one, I introduced the tar command and I said tar is one of those commands that I use every day. If I use tar every day, then I probably use curl every hour just because it's so common and I use it for testing my HTTP APIs all the time because it's so handy and it's always there at the command line. So curl is actually more than an HTTP client, but in this video, I'll be focusing on its HTTP capabilities. So what is an HTTP client? Well, in the easiest way, what we can do is we can do something like curl google.com. And you can see we specified a host. Um, we could have also specified a path and we get a result. Now that is something that you would probably rather do in your browser but we can build on that. So as you can see, curl takes an address or a URI as an argument. So to demonstrate this, I've built a simple REST API and that was a lot of fun and I'll create a separate video on how I built that API. And I thought for this API, let's choose a fun topic. So often in these tutorials, you see stuff like a user management system where you can create users and then read users. And I thought I want something more fun than users. So I decided to go for roller coasters. Roller coasters are fun. So in my cool little roller coaster database here, you've made a, another HTTP request with curl. I specified localhost 8080. That's my origin here slash coasters. This is the path. And the first thing that you notice is something that is implicit. So if we don't specify any kind of method, what we do end up with here is a get request. We can also make that explicit by specifying minus X, capital X, that is get. So the, the result is entirely the same because if you don't specify anything, the standard method is a get method in curl. There are some exceptions to that though, and we'll see them shortly. So my API also supports adding new coasters. So let's do exactly that. Let's do localhost 8080 coasters. And simply as it is RESTful API, because we specify a different method, we can change the behavior of the API. In this case, instead of showing a coaster, we want to add another coaster. So if you have minus X post, and then you have the minus D option to set a request body. So for this, I'll just quickly enter Vim because it makes it a bit easier to type. And here I'm just typing the name of the roller coaster. Let's use a German one, Teron, which is of manufacturer Intamin, and it's in park of Fantasialand, and the height is 30 meters. Didn't wrap that. Okay, so there we go. That's not relevant to curl, but of course we need to send fun data. So if I sent this right now, let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. We're getting status 415, unsupported content type, one application JSON, got application X WWW form URL encoded. So because we use the minus D option, curl will default to sending the content type of form URL encoded. However, our API does not need form encoding. It needs JSON encoding. So what we can do is explicitly say, sorry, set a header with the minus H option. And then we can just set the header as we would always do content type. And here we say application JSON. And we got no response. As you know, in the Unix world, no response is a good response as you also learned in video one or two, I don't know, echo dollar question mark, you get the exit code and you can see the exit code is zero. So this was successful. So what we can do now again is query our API and coasters. And as we can see, we now have two coasters in here. So this worked, that's nice. Sometimes when you send data, you don't want to specify the data in line the way that I did it just here. So in that case, you can also read it from a file. So let's do the same thing here again. And let me also show you another default behavior. If I don't specify the X post because I'm attaching a body, curl will automatically use the post method. So unless you need another method like put, you don't have to specify it if you do send a body with the minus D option. 
So this time, instead of specifying my content inline, I'm using the at symbol, and now I can reference a file. And I've prepared something here. Maybe it might make sense to show that first. So here I've prepared the, seems I haven't actually prepared it. I think here it is. Sorry about that. Let me just move that right here. Now I actually have a file prepared. It's a good thing I checked. Here we have the Incredible Hulk, which is another roller coaster, by the way. So now what we can do is curl localhost 8080 coasters. Again, set the minus D option, and we're specifying the file, which is incredible hulk.json. And of course, we need the content type header again, which is still application JSON. So let's do that. And it said it could not read the file. This makes an empty post. That is because I wrote inredible rather than incredible. So incredible. There you go. No output is a good output. It worked, as you can see. So let's check back. Let's go to our API and do a get on coasters. And now we have three coasters in here. So let's try to summarize what we've done so far. We can read the API by just not specifying a method at all or explicitly specifying a get method with the minus X option. We send a custom body that was inlined with the minus D option or from a file with the minus D option and the at symbol. And we learn to set a completely custom header with the minus H option. A flag that also comes in very handy on curl is one that exists in a lot of bash commands. That's the minus V option just to be a bit more verbose. So as you can see, by default, curl is just printing out the output. But of course, there's much more to an HTTP request than just the body. So let's take a look at that. And let's scroll up a bit. So here we can see, let me try to highlight. We can see these symbols that point to the right, basically, which say, this is the outgoing request. And then here, we have the incoming response. Content length is 404. That's funny. That's also the HTTP status code for not found, <laughs> but it's actually 404 bytes here. So here you can see uh, curl added the host header. It added the user agent header. It said we accept everything and we didn't specify any custom headers. My API returned status okay, said the content type was application JSON, added date and content length header. Then there's an empty line. That's just HTTP between the headers and the content, there's an empty line. And then you can see here, we have the content. So let's say you're using curl in a script and you don't actually care so much about all the headers, but say just the status code. So you could use some grep magic basically to try and extract this particular line, but there is an easier way. What you can do with curl is also specify the output and that is a handy way to just hide stuff. So for now, let me just go back here and remove this part. If I just run this, you can see a sort of empty request. We're saying the output with the minus O option goes to dev null. In this case, curl now printed a progress bar kind of thingy which is handy because you don't see the output. It might go in a file. You might be downloading a large file. So it's handy to see that progress bar. You can hide that with the minus S option. So if we run this request again, we get no output whatsoever. So how does that help us? Well, there's also the minus W option, which allows us to specify a string that is written. So here we could just say hello and then it writes hello. That's a bit pointless. But in this string, we can also use variables and the syntax here is the percentage sign and then these curly brackets. And in there we can say response code. And now you can see our API is only printing the response code that we get from our request, which was 200. This curl video is packed full of information. As you can see, I love curl. I love curl as an HTTP client. So I'm not done yet. I wanna show you a couple of more things. In my API, I also have a secret section that is local. Let's see if I can type localhost 8080, and I think it was slash admin. Yes, so here you get status 401 unauthorized. And just to prove it that this is not just text, you can also see 
the status code here is unauthorized. So what can we do around that? We can specify user credentials. And here for this example, I'm just showing you basic auth. And for basic auth, curl has another convenience function, which is the minus u option. So here we can say admin, and then I think the password was secret. So that's username colon password. And in this case, we're getting response code 200. Let me just remove the minus v option again, so it's a bit easier to see. And there you can see now we're seeing the super secret admin portal. And if I have a wrong password, then we get status unauthorized. But of course, it's just basic auth. So even if curl didn't have this option, I also wanna show you how to do this manually. You could just set the header yourself. And in this case, what we need is something like authorization, basic, and then we need string command substitution here, where we can say echo minus n because we don't want a new line. Then we want admin secret and sorry, that has to be colon admin secret. And that entire thing should be base 64 encoded. Let's see if that works. It does. This is of course super ugly to write. So that's why curl provides you with this convenience function. But this is another way to write a basic auth header. So let's just quickly go through that again. What's happening here? We're setting the authorization header. We're saying basic, and then we're setting a base64 encoded string that consists of admin colon secret, which is username and password. So a few more options that I want to show you. So there is also the very helpful minus I option. And this is if you want to inspect headers, but there's one thing to be careful about. If you just inspect the headers with the minus I option, the default method is now no longer get. If you see this, we're getting a method not allowed. That is because curl now uses the head method by default. My API doesn't implement the head method on this particular request. So what I can do is explicitly tell it to use get, and you can see we're seeing the headers here. Why am I showing you this? Because I have another route, which is very interesting. So if we go for coaster slash random. This API has the ability to redirect you to a random coaster, but the output is kind of disappointing. We just don't see anything. Why is that? Well, let's take a look at the headers. We can, of course, use the minus V option. So we see everything about the request, but why not just use the newly learned minus I option and set the method to get. Aha, uh -huh. so here we can see we're actually getting a status code 302 found. So this means this API is telling us to redirect and where should we redirect to? To this particular location. You might have expected that a very comfortable HTTP client would have already redirected you here if we have this information. But what I love about curl is stuff is explicit. There's no sudden magic. We don't automatically set the content type to application JSON just because our file or our body looks like JSON, or we don't automatically follow redirects because maybe we're the developer that just try to investigate how this um, redirect is working. So in this case, curl does not do this automatic redirect. But if we wanted to, we can just say, use the minus L option, capital L that is. And then we can see I still have the minus I option here. So here you can see the first HTTP header we get is 302 found with location coasters. And then we're calling that and here we're getting a status 200 okay. And now I don't just wanna see the headers anymore. I actually wanna see the results. And this redirected us to a random coaster, which in this case was Fury325. Let's go for another one. Then we have Terran. Well, these are the only two we have. No, I think we also have Incredible Hulk. Well, we're only getting those. So, there we go. There we have the Incredible Hulk. So these are finally the commands that I wanted to show you. There's more, of course, and you can check the manual yourself, but these are the ones that I wanted to cram into this video because these are the ones that I use every day. There's actually one more. I did not prepare an example for this one because it was just too much effort to set it up. Uh, but this is the minus K option and minus K means ignore invalid certificates. So if you're going for something like HTTPS, uh, 
google.com, then Google, of course, has a valid HTTPS certificate. But sometimes during development, you might not have a valid certificate. I don't have an example prepared, but in this case, what you can do is specify the minus K option, lowercase K, and that would ignore invalid certificates. That's the final one I wanted to show you. This was much longer than the other ones, I think, but I love curl. I hope you can benefit from all the content that I crammed into this video. I think what I'll do for this one is I'll add a comment with the, the timestamps of where you can find the individual chapters of this video so that you can find them more easily and also rewatch parts of it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for liking and subscribing my videos. We've recently passed 10,000 subscribers and that's just absolutely incredible. And I would like to say thank you to all of you. So thanks for that and see you in the next video.